By the end of this video, you'll have built your very own research AI agent without writing any code. And I think you'll be surprised at how easy it is to set up. I'm going to walk through the entire process with you step by step all the connections, all the credentials, all the tough stuff like that. I even spun up a new NAN account so that I can do everything you'll do if you just got into NAN. So if that sounds good, then let's get started. Before we start building, I'm going to zoom out and give you a high level overview of what we'll be doing today. So our agent will have access to two tools. The first is OpenAI and the second is Perplexity. With OpenAI, we'll have access to all the GPT models, which will act as the brain for our AI agent. And with Perplexity, well, perplexity is kind of like ChatGPT research times 10 because it has access to the internet. So we'll be able to search anything in real time. So we'll chat with our agent via the built-in chat in NAN. Then our agent will use its brain and its tools to come up with a research report that it'll then send back to us. So that's how today's flow will work. But what's cool is that the trigger and the output don't have to be like this. Once this agent is built, we could hook it up to any process that we want. So maybe anytime a lead comes in, we send it to the agent to research automatically, or we set it up on a daily scheduled trigger so that it can analyze the market, track industry trends, and send us reports via text message. There are many use cases for this research agent. Okay, now that we're done with all of that, we can go into NAN and start building this thing. So click create new workflow. And at the top left, you can name it whatever you want. I'll name ours research agent. And for the first step, you'll want to do a chat trigger. So in the top right, you'll see a plus icon, or you can click right here, and then you'll choose the on chat message option at the bottom right. And then you can go back to Canvas and click this little plus icon so that we can add the AI agent to this trigger. You'll see at the top, it says AI. You can click that and click AI agent. So now anytime we chat, it's going to be sent to the AI agent. So we can say, hey, but there's an error because we haven't hooked up a brain to the agent yet. So to give the agent a brain, you'll click the plus icon under chat model here and search for open AI, open AI chat model. So at the top, you'll see the credential to connect with is empty. Now this means we need to create a new credential so that we have access to the open AI service. So click create new credential. And here we're going to need an API key. So you'll want to go to openai.com and in the top right, you'll see login, you'll hover over it and then select API platform. And if you don't already have an account, you'll need to make one and then log in. Once you're logged in, you can go to the top right and choose your profile. Then on the left, you'll see API keys in the sidebar. You'll click on that. And then at the top right, you'll see create new secret key. And then you can name it anything you want. So just name it AI agent, assign it to any project, and then click create secret key. Now when this modal pops up, you'll want to copy this key and then go to your notes and paste it there or paste it somewhere that's secure because once you exit this modal, you won't be able to see your key again, okay? And you wanna make sure to keep this key private. If anybody else has access to the key, then they can gain access to your OpenAI account and use your credits. So copy the key and go back to NAN and paste it into this field here and click save. Then it should say connection tested successfully. Now, one more thing to note in OpenAI, you'll need to add credits to your account so that you can use the service. So go to billing and do add to credit balance. You can do something small like $5. Every time we use our AI agent, it's going to cost money, but it's not a lot of money at all. You can see here on the billing page, the GPT 4.1 mini model, which is the one we're going to be using. The input is 40 cents per 1 million tokens, and the output is $1.60 per 1 million tokens. Then you can even use the GPT 4.1 nano if you want to save even more money because it's only one cent per million tokens. And real quick to give you an idea of how much it'll cost. Well, at the beginning of this week, I had $5 as my balance. And after a week of running a bunch of NAN workflows using AI, it's only down like 50 cents. Now back in NAN, we can exit out of this and we can choose the GPT 4.1 mini model, or you could do the 4.1 nano. That's up to you. Now that we have our brain hooked up, we can send another chat and it's going to work this time. Our agent received our message, which was, hey, and then it responded, hello, how can I assist you today? And I'll say, hey, how are you doing? So yeah, congratulations. You've officially set up your AI agent with a brain and you can chat with it. So now it's time for our second step, which is to add the perplexity tool. So I'm going to click on the plus button under tool and search perplexity. And here it is, perplexity tool. And at the top, you'll see we need another credential to connect with for perplexity. So click create new credential and we need an API key. Go to perplexity.ai, log in or create an account. 
And then in the bottom left, you'll see your account icon. You'll click on it and then click on all settings. And then at the bottom, you'll see API keys. If you don't see API keys, you'll see API group and you'll need to create a new API group. So fill in that form and then you'll need to go to billing and add some more credits to your account. Then you'll go to API keys and click on create key. And here's your key. You can copy it. So something to point out, every service is going to have a bit of a different process for getting you your API keys, but it's all pretty much the same thing. You're just getting a password so that you can link this service with a third party application. And in our case, that's NAN. So once you have your key, you can go back to NAN and paste it and then click save. And you'll see connection tested successfully. So in the node, we'll configure some settings now. And first of all, we have the model. And we can see there's six models here to choose from. Each of these models serve different purposes and will have a different level of quality when conducting research. And they're also all priced differently. So let's go to Google real quick and search perplexity models and then go to the models page. And at the top, we can see there's a graph here. So sonar deep research looks to be the most costly, but it also is the most intelligent, whereas sonar is the least intelligent and least costly. Sonar and Sonar Pro are best for search. Sonar Reasoning and Sonar Reasoning Pro are best for reasoning and Sonar Deep Research is best for research. To choose which model to use really depends on your use case. If we had a spreadsheet full of hundreds of leads and we wanted to research them quickly, we'd probably want to use Sonar or Sonar Pro because the models are designed to retrieve and synthesize information efficiently. Whereas if we just had one topic we wanted to research thoroughly, we'd probably want to use Sonar Deep Research because it has models that conduct in-depth analysis and generate detailed reports. And for our example today, let's go ahead and use Sonar Deep Research. So we go back to NAN and choose it from the list here. Next, we can figure out what to put into this text field here, which is the content of the message to be sent to the model. You can think of this like us going to Google to conduct some research and typing our question into the search bar. Now, what's cool is we can use the AI agent, which has the chat GPT brain to decide what to put here because it will be smart enough to know what to ask. So just go to the right side here and click let the model define this parameter. Now the AI model will fill this in based on the way we interact with it. Now there are a few more things we could configure here to make this search more refined, but I'll cover those in other videos. For the sake of this video, let's keep it simple. We'll go back to the canvas, save this, and now it's time to send off our first message. One thing I want to mention here is that our AI agent has a system message, and usually you want to configure this so that your AI agent knows what to do with its tools. But in this case, you don't have to. It's going to be smart enough to know what to do. And I want to show you guys how smart this can be with just setting this up in the simplest way possible. So we'll leave it as your helpful assistant and then maybe refine it later in the video. So let's go here and refresh and then ask, um, how can I build better habits? And we'll send that off. And the chat model's thinking and now perplexity is thinking. So I'll get back to you guys when this is done generating. Okay, so it just finished up. It took a little bit of time, but you have to keep in mind that this is a beefy model and it's probably gonna take a bit more time than just a basic web search. So here it generated a detailed report about building better habits. Uh, you know, it gives us a good summary of what it um, researched. Building better habits requires combining science-based frameworks. If we click into the perplexity node here, we can see all the citations. So it'll show us a list of the websites it used to get this information, which is pretty cool. And because of these citations, you can ask the AI agent to provide citations in the output anytime it references one of the uh, one of the resources. So I hope you can see how powerful this AI agent will be when helping you with research. And real quick, I'm going to show you how much money we actually used to run this query. We used under a cent with OpenAI, and then with Perplexity, we used about 45 cents. So make sure you save your project. You don't want everything to be deleted on accident. And I think now is a good time to show you a little example of how you could leverage this AI agent and have it do some research for you automatically every day. So we're gonna remove the chat message received trigger and add a new trigger for schedule. Uh, so on a schedule and we'll make this daily, okay? And then we'll connect a Google Sheets to this, get Rosen Sheet. And I'm not gonna show you how to connect the credential in this video, but I'll link a video where I go over this. Okay, I've linked the list. And if we go to the Google Sheet, you can see we have a column for industry, AI, robotics, FinTech, and clean energy. So every day the schedule trigger is going to go off and it's gonna go in the sheet, get all of these industries, and send each one to the AI agent. And then the agent will run each one through the chat model and perplexity and output a detailed research report based on that industry. Now we have to make sure the agent can actually read these industries. So instead of connected chat trigger node, we have to define below 
and then drag in this industry into the prompt. And I've updated the system message. You are a research agent. You'll be given the name of an industry. Use the perplexity tool to find the most recent and relevant updates about that industry. Return a three to six sentence summary covering major news, trends, company moves, or market shifts. Focus on clarity, accuracy, and recency past one to three days. No links or sources, just a clear summary. So you want to be pretty descriptive with this message to optimize the research and output. Okay, now that that's done, we can go ahead and click execute step. Now this is going to run the perplexity model for every single one of these industries, AI, robotics, fintech, and clean energy, and output detailed responses and reports for each one. The model is doing this research, and once we get those reports back, we can write them into the Google Sheet. So here in the logs, we can see that the OpenAI chat model goes first, and then it sends a query to the perplexity model, which says latest AI industry news, and then it goes back to the chat model once that's done, and then forms the next query, which is latest news and updates in the robotics industry. And then it keeps going on through the list. The research is done. So if we go into the agent and move this to the side, we can see the output. So the AI industry is the first one, robotics industry, then the FinTech, and then clean energy. Nice, now we can add all of this data to our Google Sheet. So we'll do a Google Sheet node, dragging the output to the research column here and clicking execute step. If I go back to the Google Sheet here, we can see our research is inputted. So I know I went through this example pretty quick, but I just wanted to show you the power of using this agent to conduct automatic research on a scheduled trigger. There's so many use cases, like you could research industries, companies, people, startups, countries, whatever. You can do deep research, quick research, whatever you want with perplexity. And then the agent will process all of this data and cite and show you where all of this information is coming from. So it's much more than just being able to send the agent a chat and have it do a search for you because you could just go to Google and do something like that yourself. It's about writing in-depth research reports structured how you want. It's about integrating a helpful research agent into processes that might already exist, like something in your sales pipeline or lead generation pipeline. So if you're interested in different use cases like this, definitely check out my community. The link is in the description and it's free to join. The goal of this community is to take you from nothing to building your own custom AI automations for you, your business, or for another business. I share all of my resources from my YouTube videos, including this one, in the community so that you can go ahead and download these workflows for free. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment about future video ideas. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.